going on everyone and welcome back to another video it's citizen x and today we're going to be looking at installing jellyfin the media server you know uh, an alternative to plex as a virtual machine on proxmox now for the past couple of weeks i've been banging on about this new pc that i've got it's a trig key s5 with a, a ryzen 7 5700u processor it's got 32 gigs of ram um it's it's really good I, i'm using it at the moment for a home home server a home lab whatever you want to call it um so i thought why not uh why not show how to get jellyfin installed on it as a virtual machine so that's what we're going to do in the video today so if we come over here to Proxmox, uh, if you're not familiar with this, this is a hypervisor. So Proxmox basically, um, hard to explain it really. Uh, <laughs> if you don't know what a hypervisor is, look it up because my explanation isn't going to be very good. But it's kind of like an operating system that controls other operating systems. You know, it interfaces between um, guest operating systems and the hardware on your computer um, to virtualize the environment and make sure that uh, resources can be allocated to virtual machines and vice versa. So this is Proxmox, we're at the web UI and you can see down this left hand side this is where it shows you where all of your virtual machines are. So I've got a Jellyfin server set up already and a couple of Windows servers. So how do we do this from scratch? I'm going to show you. Let's go up here to the top right and create a VM. Now to be able to do this we're going to have to give it a name so we'll call it Ubuntu Jellyfin because I'm going to use Ubuntu to get this going. So before we can do this we're going to need an ISO image so we can go over to the Ubuntu website, go to products, Ubuntu server, download Ubuntu server and download the latest long-term support version which is as of the recording of this video is 24.04 and it's only 2.7 gigabytes, so it's really lightweight. Uh, it isn't gonna take a, a ton to run. Um, and that's good because this is gonna be run as a virtual machine inside Proxmox, and we don't want the operating system stealing a ton of our resources. We want all of that to go to transcoding our media, sending our media to our devices, that kind of thing. So download the Ubuntu image, go to this local down here, and upload the ISO image, um, so that it's it's in Proxmox and Proxmox can see it because when you download it it's just going to go to your computer so you need to upload it from your computer to Proxmox. Now you can see I've got it here Ubuntu live server so I'm going to go back up to create VM give it a name Ubuntu Jellyfin I'm going to click next it's going to say what what operating system do you want this virtual machine to be so I'm going to say Ubuntu live server and make sure this says Linux and make sure it's using the Linux kernel. Then we're going to hit next. This is all fine as default, so make sure your settings match this and click next. It's going to ask you here, this is the most important thing, um, disk size. So I don't really know how much it's going to need to be honest. I'm going to give it 50 gigs of storage. Now, Depending on the way you're going to store your media, you may want to give this um, a little bit more because if you're going to be store, storing all of your uh, media on the Jellyfin machine, you, you're obviously going to want a couple hundred gigs, if not a terabyte. But I'm using my NAS to supply the media to Jellyfin. So I'm just going to give it 50 gigs for the operating system. Uh, you know, 50 gigs, nice round number, whatever. Going to give it 50 gigs. Going to give it four CPU cores. So you make sure you're only using one socket and then however many cores you want, click next. And the default is uh, 2048, so two gigs of RAM. I'm gonna bump this up to 4096, which is four gigs of RAM. Just because I want things to run smooth, I wanna make sure it's got enough resources uh, if it needs them. Four gigs should be enough, especially for Ubuntu server. Now this is going to be bridged because it's a Proxmox virtual machine. If you haven't done anything fancy, it's going to be bridged to your home network, which is probably what we're going to want. So click next. And then it gives you a quick summary of uh, all the details that your machine is going to be set up with. I'm going to say start automatically after it's created and finish. So now in this left hand side, you can see the machine will pop up here and it's going to slowly start. So I'm going to say try or install Ubuntu server. And then we're going to have to run through the 
set up for Ubuntu server. I'll speed through some of this through the magic of filmmaking, but I will talk you through the steps to get this installed. Okay, so we are here and it's asking us what language we want. Well, I'm just gonna click English, so I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna go down at the bottom here. You can go done or back. Yes, I want English, so let's click done again. Now, what do we want? Do we want Ubuntu server? It installs a load of components and packages that make a comfortable experience. Well, we literally aren't gonna be logging into this. We're just gonna use it for Jellyfin and then we're gonna be using the Jellyfin um, web UI for everything. So I'm gonna use my arrow keys to select Ubuntu server minimized. We don't want a load of bloat. We don't want things running in the background. We don't necessarily need all the extra fancy tools. So we're just gonna click Ubuntu server minimized and click done. It's gonna use DHCP or whatever uh, network protocol you've got to give it an IP address. If you've already reserved one, you can change this, but I'll just take whatever IP address it assigns it with DHCP and I'll go into my router later and reserve that so it doesn't change. Click done. It's gonna ask you if you want a proxy configuration. I don't wanna proxy any of my things, so just click done. We can click done here as well. Yep, we want to use the entire disk, leave all of this as default and just go down to done and click okay. This is telling you a little bit how the hard drive is going to be set up. Again, just click done. Now it says sort of warning, confirm your settings because Ubuntu will be installed after this step. Are you sure you want to continue? Well, I'm going to click continue. Now it's going to ask you for a name to set up your server. So I'm going to say citizen X. Then I'm going to say my server's name, let's say jellyfin. Pick a username, Citizen X. Choose a password, something super, super secure to log into Ubuntu. And then we're just going to use our arrow keys again to go down and select done. Do we want to set up you upgrade to Ubuntu Pro? Not really. Skip for now. Click continue. Do we want to install OpenSSH server? I'm going to say no because we can manage everything through the um, Proxmox console and the Jellyfin web UI. So click done. Don't add on any of this, just go straight down to done and click done again. And now it's going to install Ubuntu server for us. So we'll speed through some of this with the magic of filmmaking. Okay, now the installation is complete, so we're going to use our arrow keys to go to, re to reboot now and hit enter. We'll see a couple of errors here because Technically, because of Proxmox, the installation media is still in. So we'll just hit the enter key and we'll be booting straight in to Ubuntu server. And there we are. So we're at the Jellyfin login screen. Just use your username and password that you created in the previous step. And there we are. We're logged in. Now, there won't be much work at the terminal, but there is a little bit. So just follow along with me. Now, everything to get Jellyfin installed can be done with one useful command. This command will be in the description, so please look at it if you want to copy and paste it. If not, just follow along with me now. So, <clears throat> we're going to type in curl, C-U-R-L, space dash S, space HTTPS, colon, slash, slash, repo, dot, jellyfin, dot org, forward slash, install, dash, D, buntu, Dot sh. Then you're going to do a space and you're going to use the logical or, or it's also known as pipe. So we're going to pipe this uh, script to bash as a sudo user. So we're going to do pipe sudo bash. So all this command is doing is saying use curl to grab the instructions at this address and execute them uh, as administrator in a bash script. We're going to hit enter. Type in our password for sudo. It's going to say it's found the following details from the script. They all look OK, so press enter to begin installing Jellyfin. It's gone through, it's found the packages, it's downloading and, and installing them. And within a couple of seconds, Jellyfin will be installed and live on our system. So it's going to say it's installed, 
It's waiting 15 seconds for Jellyfin to fully start, and then it's going to give us some useful information. It's going to tell us the IP address it's running at, and the port it's running on, for us to be able to access it in our web browser. So here we go, it says, Jellyfin is running at 192.168.0.181 on port 8096. Type this into your web browser to finish setting up Jellyfin. So, let's pop along to our web browser here. We're going to go to 192.168.0.181, colon for the port, 8096, and we're going to hit enter. It says, welcome to Jellyfin. Let's just click next. We want English as our language. We're going to pick a username, Jellyfin, and a password for that user. You can change this username to whatever you want, but just make sure you remember it because the Jellyfin service um, or, or this user will require access to the folder that you put your content into. So make sure you remember the username and password so that Jellyfin can actually access your movies and TV shows. I'm just going to stick with the default Jellyfin for now. Well, you know what? Let's change it. Let's change it to Citizen X. And a password. And then we're going to hit next. Now it's going to say set up your media libraries. So this is your chance to point it to where your media is. So we're going to say content type. Well, it's a movie. We're going to hit this button here, the folders. And you're going to, what you need to do now is either create a folder within uh, Ubuntu where you're going to store your content and point to it here or use the terminal to mount your NAS or whatever you're going to be using um, to host your content. So what we'll do now is we'll just, we won't add anything for now, we'll click next. We want English, country region is the United Kingdom, next. Allow remote connections to this server so that we can actually get to it, yep. And you're done, finish. Now you can log into Jellyfin, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop over to the instance that I've already created that's up and fully running so I can show you its features. So here we are at my actual Jellyfin install that I've been using for the past couple of weeks on this TrigKey S5. And as you can see at the top here, these are my two media folders. So I've got movies and I've got TV shows. I've kind of split them up like that. But just like Netflix, just like Amazon, it's got fancy features. So it can say continue watching. You can continue watching things that you finished and it actually remembers where you were at last time you watched it. It's got next up. It's got a recently added section so you can see all the things that were recently added to your Jellyfin library. Recently added TV shows. So let's just go into TV shows as an example and we will select Band of Brothers. <laughs> But as you can see, it automatically, from the file name, pulls down the cover photos and information about the TV show, about the movie. So we'll click into it here. It gives us a, a, a box art image. It gives us a, a sort of a cover image here. It pulls in the rating from IMDB and it gives us a little synopsis of the show. It tells us what a genre it is, who the writer was, who the studio that published it was. We get all our seasons down here if we had more than one season. We get the cast and crew, and one really interesting thing is it searches your library for more like this. So Generation Kill is in my library, that's that's very similar to Band of Brothers. Chernobyl, well that's also made by HBO, so maybe I'd like that. Game of Thrones, also HBO, maybe I'd like that. House of the Dragon, you get the picture. So let's go to Game of Thrones as an example. And you can actually see here, it's got all the different seasons, it's pulled out an image for every single season. We've got the cast and crew, we've got more like this. It's a really, really nice system and this can be used across your house. So if you've got a smart TV, this can be installed on your smart TV. I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Um, it can run on your phone, it can run on your PC or laptop and this will work in, in any room of your house and it's all being done through the network. You don't have to connect anything to it. Um, it's a real fantastic system. It's really easy to set up. And I'd recommend that you all give it a try. And it's running, as I say, inside this Proxmox virtual machine. Let's click on summary here. 
I've given it four CPU cores and at the moment you can see it's using 0 0.46, 0 0.23 of the resources. It's really lightweight on the Ubuntu server and it's using about half of the RAM I've given it. So let's just click in here. I know that my Game of Thrones is in 1440p so let's grab one of the Game of Thrones episodes and we will begin streaming it. So we can see that play in there, it's very quick, we can skip around and it's very quick to skip around. And let's just hop back to the Proxmox virtual machine and you can see now that the CPU is actually doing some transcoding, it's transcoding this to whatever format it needs to be and uh, it's a 1440p video. We're using about 10% of the resources um, and as things get buffered and you know etc, the CPU usage only really goes down. So um, we're not maxing out the RAM of 4 gigs, we're not maxing out the 4 CPU cores. Um, this is running on a really lightweight Ubuntu virtual machine. It's fantastic, I couldn't sing its praises more. So that's been my video on getting Jellyfin installed on, on a Proxmox virtual machine. Drop a like if you liked it. Any questions below, let me know. Um, like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Remember to subscribe and thank you for watching. Just a quick one before we go. I couldn't let you go without showing you it working on the TV. So here's one of the most impressive parts and most useful parts about Jellyfin. So let's get this in focus here. There's a Jellyfin app for your smart TV. So if you just go over to the Jellyfin app icon, which is that one there, hit select, and Jellyfin will begin loading. Now I've got it set to automatically log in, so it'll quickly ask me for my details and then zip past that screen as it remembers them. There we go. And then it connects to the machine and just like on the PC, you can see there we've got our TV shows, we've got our movies and we can hop into any, any one of them. Let's do Game of Thrones again as an example. Let's scroll down, this time we'll pick season two and we'll go for, we'll just hit play. And there it is, Game of Thrones playing from Jellyfin on the Trigkey S5 Mini PC. So, as I said guys, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, make sure to subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.